Hey gang, Rod Cumberland, East Coast Lumberjack. And I mentioned that we were going to talk about runout. That's a, a topic of great concern for a lot of axemen and guys that are purchasing handles that uh, know what to look for. And I want to try to go over a little bit with you. So, back when I talked about the best handle wood for axe handles, uh, we talked about how wood grows. So, uh, trees put on a ring of growth every year from the cambium. So they grow wood to the outside, bark to the outside, wood to the inside. So your tree gets getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, if you have a if you have a, a knot or something at the bottom of the tree where there was a branch and it's fallen off, of course that the bark will grow over top of that. And of course, there you'll see a wow in the wood, and it'll continue until it, the wood actually gets out quite a ways farther. And you can still see that uh, imperfection in the bark on the outside, but a lot of times the wood on the inside is actually, if it's enough years, successive years have gone by, it actually smooths that right over. Um, the other thing that can happen, of course, is your tree can have crooks and, uh, and bows in it. So uh, as a tree's going up, it can sweep one way or the other. And if you split your block of wood from the outside of the, of the uh, tree, which I call the, uh, the sapwood, which we call the sapwood, um, if it follows that bark along at all, your wood's going to actually follow the contour of the tree. That's, your grain is going to follow that as well. So a few examples I have here. I've got some, uh, some really pronounced examples. Um, here's one here. So this here is taken from the butt end of a tree. This is where the butt was. And if you look down that, you can see there's a, there's a sweep in that. Okay? So it actually it bows, to the, it bows away from me. And of course the grain's running straight along the bark, but because there's a sweep in the wood, the grain actually uh, sweeps with it. So if we were to lay an axe in, the, uh, what happens is the tools and the handles we make aren't necessarily shaped. A lot of them are straight, okay? So a lot of our axe handles, first thing we do, we look down the handle. If you're a good axe, that's the first thing you're gonna do, take your axe handle and look down it and say, how straight is that handle? Okay, is that handle very straight or not? And what you want, you want a straight handle. Now, sometimes with broad axes, you actually do want a crooked axe handle. And I've got a, one of those hanging here to show you. They were offset left or right. Here's one here. You can see the, the head of it's offset. Okay, so what I do is I actually look for wood that had that natural crook in it. And when I find it, I'll set that aside and I'll save it for a handle like this. So this is a, a left-handed uh, left broad axe handle, and of course the, uh, the broad axe sits on that side, and of course you can chip away without worrying about hitting your knuckles or anything else. So they were actually used a lot back in the day. So that's a crooked axe handle, and that's how you can actually take advantage of wood that has crooks and, and bows in it. Now I've got another one here. This is a hickory log, and again it comes from the bottom of the tree, but you can see this one here is a real solid <laughs> wow in it. So if I lay my pattern on this and draw it out and cut it out, if I make it straight, of course, the grain is going to run out at both ends of this. Okay, so if the handle's straight, the grain's going to run out at the far end and it's going to run out at the near end. That's what we call run out. And it's very pronounced in axes, axe handles that, of course, one of two things happens. Either number one, you've got crooked wood to begin with, you've got a wow in your wood, and you're trying to make a straight handle. When that happens, you'll get uh, you'll go across a couple of layers of grain and see run out. The other thing that can happen is just the contour of your handle itself can cause run out. For example, here's a PV handle. Okay, and it's made out of ash, but of course it's got a big wide, it's about two and a half inches wide here, and it goes way down to about an inch wide here. So as your handle is going, even if your grain, especially if your grain is perfectly straight on a handle like this, because it's going out wide here, you're going to actually cross a number of grains to get to this width and to get to that width down there, okay? And we notice this a lot, most commonly as axemen, we notice it in the palm swell, okay? So when we come down to the palm swell, mine come out, and that's one of, what I'm known for at East Coast Lumberjack is my nice palm swells. They come out a lot, and of course, if it comes out a lot and your grain is straight, you're going to actually come across three, four, five, at least, and depending on how tight your, your grain is, your uh, growth range, you may run across even more than that whenever the handle naturally takes its sweep, whether you have a, a neck on it here, and it actually comes out for the neck, or when it comes out for the palm swell. So you're going to see 
what we would typically call grain runout. Okay, and you're going to see that in these areas of your handle wood. Now, when it gets problematic is when we have that grain run out in the middle of the handle where it's straight. Okay, if the, if the handle itself is straight and you have grain run out, a couple things are happening. Okay, now a lot of guys don't do their handle wood like I do. They don't split it out by hand, take the wood from the outside uh, of the sap wood and actually make their handles out to make sure the grain's running straight. A lot of guys will just uh, quarter saw wood or run it through a mill to make the most, and, and I understand what they're doing. They're trying to make the most of the wood and with a handle wood like hickory, I think you can get away with that a lot more often than you can with a wood like uh, ash or even a, a weaker wood than that. So sometimes, even though you have grain run out, will it cause a problem or not? Now one place we had, uh, we get run out problems if we actually take uh, handle wood grain, and rather when we did the test here on uh, part four or four, um, and our grain's running, instead of running lengthwise of the eye, it's running width of the eye, what happens is you would actually get natural run out here at the throat or the the neck of the where the uh, handle sweeps out and you also get that down here you'll get run out on this way and this way okay and and the concern is if you get a split off my my concern was always if it happens down here at the butt um, then all of a sudden your palm is gone so and I saw that happen and a lot of times we had at handles that would actually split here along the grain as well so obviously you have a lot less of that if the grain runs uh, lengthwise with the eye but when you do get this run out along a, a handle, and it's a straight handle, then typically what's happened is the wood that they've used has done one of two things. Either they've taken a, a crook in the wood and milled it, okay, to make the, the wood actually straight, or the wood itself is, uh, is crooked. Like I showed you here, these two pieces, even though I split these off of the outside of a, of a log, they still have that sweep in them. So you're gonna get that. Now the question is, how much grain run out or, or can you tolerate that that's really the question because all handles are going to have a bit even mine with beautiful straight wood a lot of you know sometimes in my handles you won't see a grain the whole from one end to the other of the handle until you get to the uh, the flare at the end um, and of course it's beautiful wood and of course that's what i'm aiming for but it doesn't necessarily have to be that now number one if you have a wall hanger if you're putting that the axe on the wall you'll probably want a lot more of that run out because it shows beautiful grain pattern. And if it's just going to hang on the wall, it doesn't really matter hill of beans. So usually I'll save my, my handle wood that has a little bit of trouble like that, like these two I showed you. This is really nice wood, but of course I'm not going to use it in my number one handles. So I'll save that for somebody that's going to, that tells me, hey, this is going to be a wall hanger. And if I know it's going to be a wall hanger, I'll take that wood because you'll actually get a little bit more grain and see that a lot, uh, that pretty grain the whole way down through the handle because you actually are getting run out. Uh, so the problem is, is guys are concerned because you're going across the grain. And remember when I show you my videos, the first videos I put up on this channel that uh, where I show you how I actually split out my handle wood. And you can see that when you're splitting that out, it runs right along the grain. So the concern is, if you, as you're using that handle and putting forces and pressures on it, it's going to do the same thing and follow that grain and actually split your handle. And a lot of guys have experienced that, which is why they don't want grain run out. So the question is, how much can we tolerate? Okay, so I've got a bunch of different handles here. This is an ash handle. And you can see as you look along this handle, um, there's only one, there's two places along this handle that there's actually grain run out along the, the main length of it. And usually two or three grains, if you go across two or three grains, I don't think, uh, growth rings, that's not a big deal, okay, in the length of the handle. So, so my rule of thumb is if I'm going across two or three, nah, big deal. Now here's one here that looks a lot different. See this here? So this here was an, a buried knot inside of the wood. It was a, quite a ways in. Of course, I'm splitting this off the outside, but there's still, because the wood's still just trying to, to uh, heal up and, and grow over top of that, I still got a little bit of this in the wood. Now, is that a big deal? You'll see where I put it. Okay, this is going to go on a practice axe, so the head's going to sit here. So this really, what I'm going to have is two grains here that is, that is going to cause any issue at all, and they won't. Okay, so again, two or three growth rings, not a big deal. And this part, if this was in the middle of the handle, might be a different story. But it's up here at the end. Okay, so it's going to be buried inside the eye like this when that's hung. So it's, it's not going to be problematic there. The only thing it might do is when you're actually shaping the, the head here, your grain's going in two different directions, so a lot of times you get to uh, use a, a different kind of spoke shave or, or a wood rasp or something to get around it. But it's, it's not a problem as far as strength of the handle goes because of where I put it. 
Okay, that just comes with experience. Um, here's another one, another green you can see here. Okay, one or two up here. You're going to get that in any handle, but again, the, the full length of it, not a thing. Okay, till you get down here to the butt. Um, I think I have another one here I want to show you that has another. No, I guess not. Here's another one here. Okay, so so this is my, what, my, what my East Coast handle would looks like. You'll get a few grain, you know, across a little bit here. Not a big deal at all. Okay, and if there is a lot, the rule of thumb. So, <laughs> the take home message. If you're looking at grain run out, along the length of the handle, three, four grains running out, mm, I, I'd start over four, I'd get a little bit more concerned. If it's, if it's two, three along the length of it, not a big deal. But what you want to look at is the ratio between number of growth rings and how many growth rings remain in the handle. Okay, now what I mean by that, <clears throat> this handle here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine growth rings in this handle. Okay, so my rule of thumb is 25 to 30 percent. Okay, uh, it is tolerable. If it's over that, I'm not going to use a handle. It's not a number one. It doesn't go out of this shop as a number one. Um, I will use those in a lot of other things. I've got some beaters around the house and stuff, so I'll, I'll put them in my reject pile. Some guys that are axe collectors will buy those uh, for a reduced price from me just to put a handle in an axe just to, to sell it. So that's where those go. Okay, but you want 25%. So this, if this has eight or nine uh, grains in it, obviously if we have more than two or three um, grains that we're going uh, cutting across as far as run out, that's when it gets problematic, okay, in my mind. Now, again, the, the, the greater the growth rings, we know there's more strength. In, of course, the, the wider the growth ring in ash, the stronger the wood, same as in hickory. So even though we have maybe only five grains here, we get around to one or two here. We know it's a stronger handle overall, okay? But again, two, two would be the max in a five-ringed five, uh, handle. So that's, that's my rule of thumb, okay? So if I look at a handle, there's uh, other ones here. That's a nice one. I want, I want one that has a lot of growth rings. Not that one. What's this one? Okay, here's one here. Okay, see this one? Okay, so they're, they're a lot tighter growth rings. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there's 20 growth rings in this one. So I would take uh, 20 growth rings, 5 would be the max. So again, we've on this handle here, there's one, two here, then it goes back in. And of course, nothing till you get down here. Now, now again, because it's there's 20 growth rings in this, there's a lot of growth rings. Look at my palm swell now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. Of course, and again, that's because the handle is sweeping out for my nice palm swell. So you're gonna obviously cross some grains to do that. So that's that's not what you're looking at. That's not the issue. The issue is along the length of the handle. Okay, so the East Coast Lumberjack, my rule of thumb, no more than 25% run out. So I'd count the grains, however many grains you have, uh, divide it by four, and I would I would not buy a handle or purchase a handle that has more grain run out than that. Okay, so that's my rule of thumb. Now I have another handle here, and the reason I did this video today is I was making this handle. I'm trying to uh, see this handle wood here. Now if you look along the outside of it, I'll do it this way first. You can see the outside is pretty straight. Okay, just a little bit of a bow in it, right here, not much at all. And the grain on the outside here, you see there's wide grains on the inside. Okay, the inside here, there's lots of wide grains and it gets narrow on the outside. So obviously when I'm doing this handle, I'll try to put my wood, my handle, my pattern to the inside of this to get more of that uh, wide grain, this, the stronger wood. Okay, now the other thing you'll notice, if you look down the inside of it, it is a few sweeps in it. Okay, there's a sweep in here and there's a, there's a bump out there. So when I, when I actually move my handle wood in, see the red line here? I've actually drawn this along, okay, I've drawn this uh, red line along the actual growth ring. So this is an individual growth ring. And you can see here as well, my, my handle pattern, okay? It's probably better this way. So you can see that the, the pencil lines here is where the handle is gonna be, it's nice and straight. But you can see here that the, this wood grain actually runs in, across, and back out again, right to the outside, toward, and that comes back in again at the butt. Okay, so there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of sweep in this. There will be run out in this piece of wood when I cut it out. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you. So, so this, when I'm looking at this and I'm drawing my lines, I know right off the bat, this is a problem handle. Okay, this is not going out the doors number one. So I've got to make this guy another handle, which isn't a big deal. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to carve this out on the bandsaw and then bring it back and show you what this looks like, okay? So typically my handle wood, it runs nice and straight, my grains along the handle. You get one or two out along the length of it, not a big deal. And again, some guys like it because it's pretty looking. If you get a lot of sharp uh, run out, which guys are looking, and, and that's a big uh, flashing red light to guys, okay? You get a lot of run out, it's not going to be, you, you're going to have problems with that handle, especially if you have more than 25% grain run out on your handle. That, that's my rule of thumb. So, let me throw on my, my gear. I'm going to cut this out, bring it back, and show you what it's going to look like, okay? You can watch me here. This is how uh, the old East Coast Lumberjack makes his handles. So, uh, I did a lot of grinding of axes years ago, and uh, grinding the axes, actually the, the metal dust, it's kind of caused me problems. So I went to these, uh, I went to the mask, um, it has a couple filters actually, but it works really well. My wife won't kiss me, I don't know why, but anyways, and of course I wear earmuffs all the time. So let's go to the bandsaw. <laughs> for bearing with me so now we can see now we can see what we're looking at now even though this had a lot of run over if we look at this side of the handle we've got two grains that we're running across and this is what you're looking for okay this is very obvious run out in the handle so there's two here this third one doesn't really matter much because it's on the other side but then we have right here okay one two no, actually not bad on this side then there's a couple here let's look at the uh, let's look at the other side this side here okay so now we see a lot more of it so there's one two three four this handle has one two three four it has four on one side five six seven eight nine so it has nine grains across the width of it okay you can see that and you also see how it's really bowed a lot so we know that this comes from a smaller tree which is why i like to take my wood from larger trees usually 12 inches and larger because i don't get that a lot of times what will happen with wood like this okay if you're taking your axe handle wood from smaller trees the wood will cup. So you'll get you'll get it the, the a cupping of the wood, it'll actually pull from one side to the other as it as it shrinks a little bit, because all wood all wood shrinks as the moisture goes out of it. So that's typically what will happen in wood like this. A lot of guys that are woodworkers know that that happens when they're actually making uh, 
when they're planing wood, uh, cupped wood like this here, you'll actually have to plane these two outside edges eventually in this top part because it'll actually, it'll cup to follow that. Okay. Um, so again, here's, here's the grain. Okay, we can see the red line that actually follows that piece of grain. Now the good news is, the other thing is, as long as the grain, the reason I use 25% is because if you have 25% um, of the wood that's running out, 75% of the wood is still in the handle. Okay, so that maintains your integrity because 75% of, of the grains, the growth rings, are still within the handle width. Okay, so even though there's a little bit of run out here, a little bit of run out here, most of the strength is still in that handle wood. That's why I use 25%. Okay, so in this handle here, we can see there is a lot here. There's one, two, three, four. There's four here, and then there's a bunch more on the top. And, there's, and right here, we'll see there's one grain, two, three, four, five. Now remember, there's nine, uh, nine growth rings in this handle. So I've got five along the length of it. This handle will not go out the door. However, okay, you can see how pretty the grain is. If some guy's gonna use this as a wall hanger, he's gonna get a lot of pretty looking grain on the handle. Okay, especially when I round out the edges and stuff, he's going to see a lot more of that grain exposed. So that's what that handle there would be saved for. So that's a little bit about run out. Uh, run out is basically when you're, uh, you have a straight handle and it's going across wood that's wavy. You'll get run out of the grains uh, in one direction or another. Again, you'll typically get that in the flares whenever your wood pattern actually changes a lot. You're going to go across straight grain wood regardless. But the problem is if you get a lot of that in the middle of the handle, and again, this is probably even tamer compared to what some guys have seen. I've seen some handles in the hardware store that you'll get about eight or ten grains running right across, and you know that that's come from a crooked piece of wood. So that's my advice. 25% rule, use that. You'll be safe every time. Um, I shouldn't say every time. You'll be The vast majority of time, you're not going to have a problem with that handle. That's my rule of thumb that I use. Um, we're dealing with a natural product, so obviously anything can go wrong. But generally speaking... Um, if you use that rule of thumb, you're not going to have a problem in the handle. So the other thing I do when I take the handle off the bandsaw is I'll look down it to make sure it's nice and straight. So see if my uh, working is, is done well, my, my craftsmanship, and of course that one's straight as a die. Um, and I'll, I also have in my instructions, if you have, a, especially ash, even hickory, I've done this as well. If sometimes you cut, a lot of times there's a lot of uh, stress or strain in the, in the handle wood. And as you're cutting it out, you'll see it actually prying apart. And, and woods workers uh, know this when they're actually cutting wood. And they'll see sometimes you're cutting it and it binds tighter together. That's because of the, the uh, stresses in that are pushing together. Other times you're cutting and actually it'll pry right apart. Okay, what that tells you is there's a lot of internal stress on that wood. Um, it's probably not going to be the best handle wood you could get because it's already, it's already grown under, under a lot of stress. Um... However, uh, sometimes you may, uh, you may get handle wood that actually moves a bit. The good thing about ash and hickory uh, ring porous woods is you can actually bend it, okay? And you can bend without heat. A lot of guys think you have to uh, steam it, and you can, which the, we've done with snowshoes and stuff in Canada here for umpteen hundred years. Um, making snowshoes, we just uh, steam the, the ash, and of course we know it's very pliable once it gets uh, steam on it, and you can bend it right in a circle. Okay, we don't need to do that. We just need to move it a few degrees. And you can do that with dry wood, okay? You can put it under a vise. That's what, usually what I use here on my bench. Give it a pry, straighten it out, and then I've hung them to see how long will it stay like that or will it return. Um, most times it'll stay like that. Um, sometimes if you get, and again, that's it's the wood that has a lot of stress, internal stress in it. And sometimes I bent that, it comes straight, and then it doesn't take too long, a couple of weeks, and it actually starts bowing back. Again, not, a, not good handle wood. It's under a lot of stress. So thankfully, most of the trees, that's why when I'm, when I'm buying wood, I'm very fussy. I want nice straight wood that's grown straight. Um, you typically, if the bark's nice and clean, the little diamonds are on top of one another, you get some nice straight handle wood. So, all kinds of talk about run out. Um, thanks for joining me. I'd also ask you to subscribe to my channel. Um, then whenever I come out with uh, some new stuff, we'll, we'll talk more about that. So the upcoming videos, we, we need to talk about, uh, we need to go back to yellow birch. I, there's a guy out there that loves yellow birch. And yellow birch, if when we start looking at the, its properties, is pretty impressive. Actually, the, the numbers speak for themselves with yellow birch. So uh, as far as diffuse porous woods, usually I'd say don't use them for anything except something that's gonna you're going to pry with. But uh, yellow birch is the exception. It actually looks pretty good, other than the fact 
if you split much firewood in your days like I have, you know it splits tough. <laughs> and you're going to go from a 16 inch length, now you're going to go up to, uh, to a 3 foot length. But anyways, I won't steal all the thunder for that video. Um, again, East Coast Lumberjack, thanks for joining. I'm signing off.